Hello everybody, welcome to the CFA program exam preparation workshop. My name is Peter Menzies uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today as we discuss really the top 10 tips uh, for getting ready for the CFA program exam. Uh, I suspect you're uh, getting ready for it in December, uh, the level one of the program. It is a significant challenge as I'm sure you've already found out. And what this is going to try and do is to make sure you understand how to get the best out of the remaining few months until that exam. Um, we'll have a look at the agenda. Let's have a see what we're going to be covering today. So firstly, of course, Fitch Learning, a little bit about what we do. Um, maybe you might be interested in studying with us. I'll say what uh, programs are being offered, um, and you can see if it might fit into your timetable. And then we'll look at the top 10 tips of study. Um, this is really something we've gathered together, myself and lots of others who work as a trainer in this, uh, in this firm. We are CFA chart holders, and so we believe these would be the most important things that we wish we knew when we were taking the exams ourselves. Then there'll be a chance for some Q&A. Of course, if you have any questions, happy to take those. And, and the next steps, really, if in case you are interested in taking on some of the options. So, without further ado, just a little bit about uh, Fitch Learning. Yes, uh, Fitch Learning um, has been essentially almost 20 years now of training uh, candidates through the CFA program, and that works like you know, over 3,000 candidates every year, so you can imagine um, it's a lot of experience that we have. And the experience is what helps us then write our materials, our questions, and our, our classroom sort of uh, slides because we know really what the challenges are and where most uh, candidates uh, struggle. So you could choose from a wide range of uh, flexible classroom uh, and also online learning options. Get a, uh, you know, get a very, I think the main, main focus of, um, of the Fitch Learning experience is what they call Fitch Learning Cognition, which is a adaptive uh, online learning. Now, you may think, what's, what's adaptive mean? Well, adaptive means that as you take uh, the, if you as you study through the uh, the, the cognition uh, platform, it essentially is learning uh, where your weaknesses are, where your struggling uh, points are, and it will then essentially keep you uh, focused on those areas. So, you know where you're obviously sailing through, you know it'll then push you on to ne uh, further topics, and I think that's smart because therefore you don't end up wasting too much time and doing things again and again which you already know. Now, that's really what's smart about cognition. In the old-fashioned way, of course, if you wanted just to do every question that's available, you can do that. Do it again and do it again. You could do it that way. But cognition works to adapt to your, your challenges, your learning difficulties. Um, consolidate your knowledge, of course, is key before the exam, and you can do that uh, before the exam with online and both classroom review packages. I'll explain what is in those packages in a moment. Now, in terms of uh, co cognition, like I was saying, um, it is uh, quite revolutionary. It's quite sort of, uh, should we say, smart, uh, and uh, you can study with it uh, either, of course, via desktop, but also on your mobile apps, so iOS and Android compatible. And the main thing is that um, you know you'll have very limited time, of course, to study. So you can see here you know, a few screenshots of cognition, um, and it just shows you um, essentially there are you know, readings across the CFA program, right? There's about 60 readings, 60 chapters, and they're spread over sort of 10 key areas like quants and ethics and so forth. And so as you're studying through that, you're completing the questions, of course, to a certain level of accuracy. Now, if it's, if it's good enough, for example, if you're getting, say, 70% of the questions correct, then that generally is good enough to pass in that in the exam. So, It'll basically give you a badge of completion, say that's good enough, and then move on. Don't worry about being 100% score. Don't worry about perfecting your knowledge yet. It's really about pushing you through, really, of course, a huge amount of material over really just four months. And, you know, all of the time frames left, how many readings you've covered, and how many days to the exam, all of the metrics that you want to know will all be presented nicely for you. It's all color-coded and so forth. So easy to use. And very much uh, what I like about it is it atomizes the concepts. So questions will be bite-sized questions, you know, based upon short videos that you can watch, 
And then you can always take those questions and say, right, I've only got half an hour, it's a lunch break, but cognition will help me just isolate a few problem areas I'm having, let's say, you know, deferred tax and accounting or uh, pull call parity in options. Let me just do a quick few questions there and see if I've really understood the topic properly. Let me go back into my work and I'll study again maybe tomorrow. And of course, if you are struggling, then you can access our, uh, our instructor team via the online help desk. As a global team, so wherever you are in the world, you know, Middle East, Africa, wherever it may be, you will be able to access a uh, faculty member uh, throughout the day, as we have uh, offices uh, indeed across these markets anyway. Now, what's available to you? Well, the first thing is traditional classroom courses. Because in a classroom, of course, you can ask the question real time and you can hear what other people are asking. And of course, the, that's a, for some people, that's the way they like to learn. And we do that. Classroom courses do run uh, evening, weekend, daytime uh, uh, courses. Now, the, um, the evening courses will essentially be about two to three hours worth. It's about half a day of material, really. Uh, weekends will be a full day, of course, Saturday or Sunday. And daytime courses tend to be two days at a stretch, uh, nine to five. A week, so, you know, a full day. Uh, intensive courses, uh, that might be available in your region. You have to check with your learning advisor. But that would be five days where we cover uh, what we would usually cover in 10 days. So usually it's 10 teaching days for the CFE1 program condensed into five. So obviously there, we're really just cherry picking the most difficult areas and assuming that you're doing the extra learning yourself at home. Now, the online learning, of course, the uh, modern way to learn here is just basically you'll you know, just log in uh, to your uh, Fitch Learning Portal, uh, the Cognition, and you will uh, attempt all of the material in Cognition. Now, we have all the recordings of, uh, you know, trainers, instructors going through all of the readings anyway. So it's pre-recorded, ready for you to watch. And like I say, you have these sort of bite-sized you know, chunks of video to watch, do the questions, Obviously, supplement that with reading the CFA uh, book where you need to. Um, alternatively, you can have the live lectures added on as well, so you can actually watch streams of, uh, of live classes, which kind of puts you, of course, in the, um, you know, that, that world of what are people asking, you know, what are people finding difficult. You can sort of, you know, be there with them and hear what they're asking. Um, review courses will be essentially in the month of November as we get really down to it. Are you now with about six weeks ready to go, five weeks to go? Here's what we can do. Give you a two-day classroom review course, which will be intense question practice um, and you know, lots of questions and um, explanations, of course. Uh, and uh, alternatively, you can do this online. Online review package has the recordings of the, uh, of the classes. And uh, Question Bank would just be having access just to the questions itself from Fitch Learning. And uh, online mock exams separately would be about five full mock exams, you know, six hours per exam, and you know, full explanations and links to where it comes from the curriculum. So this is what is available to you from Fitch Learning. Um, like I say, um, you know, all full, or I should say, all full classroom and online learning options will always include access to Fitch Cognition. Yeah? Always have access. Now the top ten tips. Things which I, you know, would say very much from experience, these are good things to know ahead of your December exams. So we'll take it in turn. You can see top ten things. We'll start with number one, allocating time to study. Now, the official uh, recommendation is 300 hours of study for level one. 300 hours, right. So in my sort of experience, I think 300 hours is actually quite accurate. Maybe some levels of CFA... I've spent more, it's so maybe some less, but 300 average is about right. So that boils down to six months of about 11 or 12 hours of study each week. Now, as, we, as no doubt you've probably heard of people say, it's like a marathon, isn't it? The study that you do for CFA program is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You certainly can't cram it in a couple of weeks. You have to take your time and progress should I say, with discipline uh, throughout the six months, five, six months. 
Now, we don't recommend you try to do, of course, 11 hours in a day, but certainly two hours, one hour after work, if you can fit it in, and of course the weekend comes, you start again four hours and four hours on a Saturday and Sunday. So quality learning uh, is what we want. You can't waste any spare time, obviously. You know, of course not. And like I was talking about the bite-sized learning five minutes that we can do in those videos, I think helps maximize that. Now, a strong study plan. Now, I think when you start out, it's imperative that you have a time, a time frame which you know I must finish certain topics by that time. Now, you could do it yourself, of course, but Fitch Learning uh, does it for you as well. So when you essentially log into Cognition for the first time, you'll have your study plan already uh, log lo loaded in for you. So you can see the dates at which you're expected to hit certain tests and targets. And of course, if you're not on track for those tests, that means you are basically moving too slowly. So you need to uh, quicken pace. You'll be having been being, uh, reminded that you are falling behind. And I can't tell you how many people start CFA uh, program with all good intentions, and then they basically fall away because they just start to get behind and then behind again and more behind until they realize I'm so far behind, I might as well just give up. It's just too much to make up. And so you must stick closely to your study plan. Um, avoid technical gaps in your knowledge. Well, of course, nobody's going to be strong technically on every topic in the CFA program. That's, you know, there's just too much range. So for those who are comfortable with accounting, will struggle perhaps with the uh, pricing of bonds. For those who are comfortable with the maths, they might struggle with the ethics. And so forth. There's always somebody's weak area, right? And the important thing is the CFA program can test you on any part of the curriculum. So anybody who says that they know what's going to come up, they don't know. It's not true. Uh, and so it's important to cover everything and be, you know, what we would say is across 100% of the material to have a 70% level of knowledge. You know, it, that, would, that would give you an assurance that you're going to do well. So don't try and focus on the topics you're only good at. Otherwise, you'll be found out, obviously, on the other ones. So we have the tools to monitor that performance and show you, of course, where you must improve. It's imperative to get the best out of the exam. Now, the equal or joint biggest topic at level one is ethics. Maybe you already know this, 15% weighting, right? 15% weighting uh, for ethics. So you, you are going to get you know, 18 questions in the morning session and 18 questions in the afternoon session on ethics. Now, it is, for me, always the one which is the hardest to master, right? Because you're never really sure what the best answer is. But the only way to be good at this is to do and read all of the curriculum material on ethics. So the CFA Institute books are the best resource. And I'm talking about Volume 1, right guys? Volume 1 has about 150 to 200 pages of material. It is a lot, but for 15%, it's worth it. And you, once you uh, start with it and you get it done the first time, you'll then do a little more again and you'll do it again. You'll have to go through this a few times over the course of the next three, four months. Little and often is the key. Definitely can't cram ethics. I can, I can say that's for sure. It's, it's a tough one. And it's also um, one that they use to judge borderline candidates. So, you know, if someone is just on the cusp of a pass-fail score, they'll use your ethics score to determine whether you should get through. So very important, uh, as you can see. Now, have plenty of exam practice. Um, I think that's true for so any exam, isn't it? But here, we try to make sure that you have uh, plenty of mock exams available. So the online question bank, uh, separate of the mock exams, will be uh, part of your learning phase. So varying degree of difficulty questions across every, what they call, learning outcome statement. So the exam is based on learning outcome statements, like explain this, calculate this, define that. So we cover everything. But um, once you've obtained the right proficiency, again, 70%, move on. Keep pushing yourself forward. And then the next step is, of course, to assess yourself uh, with mock exams. And 
the real exam will be two, three hour papers. Um, so six hours on one day. It's a lot, isn't it? Many people don't usually do six hour exam on a day and you must therefore have as much practice. Now we do have, of course, the online uh, access to mock exams. We also though run a Fitch Learning proctored mock exam. So the real, th you know, the real thing, of course, is you physically come to a center and you will have uh, you know, plenty of other people around you, the pressure, proctors standing over you, so all of that. Um, the mock exam that we run will help simulate all of that for you. Now, using a pencil to fill in ovals on a mark sheet to be scanned by a computer, you know, all of that. Pace your study. Now, I think, yes, pace in yourself, uh, that's, gold, that's golden advice, I think, isn't it? If you do uh, little but often, um, you're not going to feel burnt out. And also, you don't feel like you're sacrificing too much of your uh, spare time. You will be able to have somebody, you're meeting some friends, going out for a bit, balance it out, but you keep on with your study. Um, we recommend, yes, you steadily increase your weekly study time so you can build momentum. Um, personally, I always try to take the week off before the CFA exam. Of course, you're using your holiday time. But so much work that you put in, it makes sense to uh, maximize it by taking those five days off before the exam. So you can really, really coast, you know, build, I should say, uh, that final push. Uh, don't overload the last week, for sure, but you just want to make sure you sharpen everything up and you're ready now. I don't need to think about anything else, and I'm good to go, because you're going to now have a big exam on that Saturday. Now, one of the other things that uh, people fall down with is that they don't really know how to get the best out of the exam calculator. So as you can see, with a screenshot here of the BA2 Plus Texas Instruments, which is the most common calculator used by the level one or the CFA program uh, candidate. And I would just say you should be using it at every opportunity. I mean, at office, at home, wherever you're doing something, just, just get familiar, use it, and so it becomes second nature. Now, there are so many excellent functions here that will save you time, uh, like NPV, IRR, you know, corporate finance, quant stuff, amortization schedules for the accounting stuff, ICON for quants, depreciation, again, for accounting, data, so, again, stats, this is going to be called quants, and TVM, obviously, for any pricing of instruments. So if you know how to get the best out of the calculator, you're going to save time. And that's, and that's key. Now, whatever happens, or however you choose to go ahead with Fitch Learning, why don't you check out this link here, fitchexamprep.com, cal so slash calculator there. That's available to you now, and it's a nice guide. In case you weren't fully aware of all the functionality of the calculator, that will explain it to you. Okay, very helpful, I think. That's very useful. Um, Now, of course, another good point to make is that uh, if you have peers who are, of course, studying for the CFA exams as well, then seek support from them. Because, you know, you'll feel discouraged at some times and you'll have areas that you can't really yourself overcome, perhaps. And so you can help get help. And, of course, they can also get help from you. So that way, of course, you push each other forward. On the other hand, um, we have a dedicated full-time faculty across various markets, uh, but they are going to be on how to help you through the uh, Global Help Desk. Okay, so especially in the last few weeks, we're going to have, uh, you know, instructors are timetabled just to sit and answer queries of candidates. And of course, there'll be many questions, and that's what it should be. You know, the more questions you ask, it shows, of course, you're going through the material properly. Now, I've said it before, remember, it is, a, it is a marathon rather than a sprint. So if in the past you've got to exams because you are sharp and you can cram a lot of material, you know, that's great. But don't recommend you try that here. The sheer amount of material is incredible. And uh, certainly trying to memorize answers to questions uh, won't work. Um, you have to understand the material well. And if you think, well, can I not just get like a few past papers and see, you know, get, get used to what they do and I can kind of work it out? 
Well, the institute doesn't pu institute doesn't uh, publish past papers, especially for level one and two. So we don't get any uh, sort of that historical past papers to look at. Uh, so no, unfortunately, we, we're just going to say you need to cover all of the learning outcome statements and be strong enough to pass an exam question in any one of them. You know, don't memorize content. Yeah? It won't, won't help you. Now, you say cognition is designed to give you a wide variety of questions to ensure you do understand. Oh, and finally, overcoming the pressure of exam day. Well, yes, nothing quite like it. I mean, when you first go to the exam, I think you'll see just, you know, everybody, of course, like you will be nervous. You put so much work into it, and you don't want to, of course, uh, do yourself uh, you know, any disservice. You want to you you pass because you deserve to pass having worked so hard. But it is a tough exam. But remember, you don't need to get every question right. So if you are struggling on a few areas, few questions, well, there's no negative marking. So guess and move on. Be disciplined. Again, every question deserves a certain time, and then move on. Now, the good thing about it is that the exam is structured into its different uh, topics. So you can just do your best area first, your best topic first. Yeah, it will be like that, ethics is first, then quants, then economics, and so forth. You, know, you will have it exactly in a certain order. So I know, I'll do this first or last. Yeah, like that. That's, that's useful. Um, make sure you get there early. Uh, and get or make, make sure you get also an early night, as I say, before the exam. Uh, plenty of sleep, right? Otherwise, you will feel exhausted even after the first three hours, and you will have no nothing uh, left in the tank for the afternoon session, right? You've got to have the energy at a high level. Yes, uh, plan your journey. Um, you know, speaking from experience in London, for example, often they have lots of like uh, you know uh, maintenance and repair works on trains and buses on the weekend, and so there's much slower service. So you must make sure you allocate extra time to get to the exam center. Know the rules as well. Um, do they allow water? Do they allow you to have food? Probably not in the room. So you have to be wary. You can't borrow any equipment. Bring your own calculator. Okay. Follow everything to the letter. Otherwise, you'll be barred from taking the exam. Don't forget to take your passport, of course, and take your exam ticket, print that out, the exam ticket and your passport, the pencils, right? Calculator, all of that, your responsibility. Okay. Now, as the uh, next step for you is if you're interested again in any of the programs we offer at Fitch Learning, you contact your local learning advisor. So you can see there for the uh, you know, Asia Pacific region there and Middle East, you can see uh, the details. And if, uh, again, you get in touch and uh, see what's available. Um, either way, I hope that um, the session has been of some use to you. And maybe you've found out things that you didn't know. I wish you the very best of luck, though, for that uh, program exam. It is a big challenge, but also very rewarding. Um, once you get through it, you learn so much. Uh, now, if any questions, I'll be certainly happy to uh, take those. So I'll just uh, give you a moment to... Uh, Ask those questions. Uh, question here, how the CFA can be helpful to you at the age of 45? Well, I suppose the, uh, the, the first thing about the CFA program is that it's essentially to be a sort of a gold standard in finance. And so if you were looking to uh, have a sort of a, some sort of uh, movement in your, uh, in your career, if you're looking to move into finance, even in a, 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 perhaps a certainly later age than others, it does show a certain expertise, uh, a certain skill level. Um, of course, even if you don't work in finance, if you're just you know, starting a business, uh, it does prepare you and skill you with what, I suppose, a master's qualification uh, would show, you know, pricing and valuing and being comfortable with statements of income and balance sheets. So a nice broad range of skills, whatever, of course, career uh, progression you want to make. I think it's a um, good thing about it, instantly recognizable qualification for employers. So to say, ah, you have embarked on the CFA program, that shows a certain aptitude, a certain commitment, and uh, that surely is a good thing.
So any other questions, of course, guys, I'll uh, just uh, wait here for a moment to see. Okay. Well, everyone, if that's uh, all right for then, we'll say goodbye for now. I wish you all the very best with your studies. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.